Good evening, and welcome to the Murfreesboro City School Board meeting. We will now stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Good evening to all and good evening to Dr. Gilbert. We're good. We have a very special guest tonight and I'd like to ask Mr. Harry Gill if he would please join me. As you know, Mr. Gill is uh, current superintendent of Rutherford County Schools and has been a longtime contributor to education and still are contributing to education, I might add. Um, it's been my pleasure to work with him the past couple of years, most, uh, I guess most frequently in the morning at 3 o'clock when, when we would be trying to decide whether or not we were going to close school for, for snow. But, but this is a resolution, Mr. Gill, that is from the Murfreesboro City School Board of Education. So I'd like to read it to you, please. A resolution of the Murfreesboro City Schools Board of Education honoring Harry Gill. Whereas the Murfreesboro City Schools Board of Education has observed his work as director of Rutherford County Schools since 2003, and whereas during that time he has efficiently overseen and managed the district's growth from 35 schools and 25,000 students to 45 schools and almost 40,000 students, and whereas prior to his service as director, he served Rutherford County as an effective administrator, coach, and teacher, and received national level nominations and state level awards for himself and for his schools. And whereas his leadership, whether at the school level or at the district level, has produced exemplary student learning as measured by the district's high academic achievement and value-added growth, and whereas he has led the state in the establishment of professional learning communities which have transformed the way schools across Tennessee intentionally and purposefully approach professional development, curriculum, instruction, and assessment, and whereas he has encouraged innovative practices such as technology infusion as, and has implemented progressive programs such as service learning, international baccalaureate, advanced placement, dual enrollment, a highly effective career technical program, etc. And whereas during his years as director he has forged a strong relationship with the Rutherford County School Board and the Rutherford County Commission and whereas he has gone outside the walls of his school district to provide opportunities for Rutherford County students, including partnerships with Middle Tennessee State University, Motlow Community College, Tennessee Technology Center, and additional post-secondary institutions, and whereas he has connected with businesses, volunteer agencies, faith-based organizations, governmental institutions, health providers, and created other alliances too numerous to mention, to ensure his students were provided with applied learning and adequate support, and whereas he has been a vigorous leader in and effective proponent of a common sense approach to legislative actions, always insisting that students come first in all decisions, and whereas he has successfully worked with two directors of Murfreesboro City Schools to create positive open avenues of communication. Therefore, be it resolved that the Murfreesboro City School Board acknowledges the accomplishments of Rutherford County Director of Schools, Mr. Harry Gill, offers its sincere appreciation to him for the level of educational excellence he has facilitated and wishes him the best as he pursues other endeavors in the education profession and his life. And it's signed by all of the members of the Murfreesboro City School Board. Mr. Gill, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I notice every time I leave a job, people stand up and clap. <laughs> uh, kidding aside, I really appreciate this. Uh, and as you uh, read the resolution, uh, realize that it's true that there have been many, many changes and many, many good things implemented in Rutherford County Schools, and that's a result of teams of people, school board support, 
and others. It takes a it takes a team to build the kind of system we have and the kind of system you have. I know you guys have really gravitated towards PLCs. I know that you've got a wonderful working relationship with your board, and that's what it takes to be successful. So I'm really humbled uh, by this resolution, and uh, you know I wish you continued success. And on a personal note with Dr. Gilbert, I really appreciate the working relationship that we've had over the last few years. I know she's receptive to working with our instructional department. I know that she's uh, availed herself for uh, her expertise, and I know our people truly respect her as well. So, uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor to be here, and I uh, commend you for the good work you're doing with the city school system. You guys are getting better each and every year, and uh, uh, it, it behooves the county when you guys are producing like you do because we get those kids, and we appreciate very much that you've got them well prepared. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, board members, we're going to uh, get started. We also have some uh, retiring board members, and uh, the first one is Dr. Susan Andrews. She's not here with us tonight, but Dr. Andrews has been a vital part of the school board for a long time. She's very knowledgeable. She's worked so well with us. And we said so many things at our last sitting with her. Uh, if any of the board members have anything they'd like to say tonight, you can at this time before we go forward to Mrs. Duggan. I did speak at the study session, but I wanted to say something publicly, too. Um, it, has, it has been a great honor and privilege to serve with Dr. Susan Andrews for the past 12 years. She was on the board for 16 years. From the first time um, that I came to a board meeting, she was gracious, kind, and encouraging to me, and that never failed. Um, she comes from a proud family heritage of supporting education. And um, we, you know, she worked so hard. She worked so hard. She did so much. She never took a penny for her service. She never held herself above anybody in the system, uh, no matter what position they held. Um, she was uh, vitally interested in everything that went on in our system. Uh, we agreed on many things, and when we disagreed, I still uh, had great respect for her opinion because I knew that her heart was with the children and the teachers in the classroom, and that is what really mattered. So it was a great privilege to serve with Dr. Susan Andrews, and I'm going to miss her. All righty. Thank you, Ms. Phillips, for your kind words. And I know when Dr. Andrews plays this back, uh, and she's heard them, but she will appreciate them again. Thank you. We're now going to recognize Mrs. Nancy Duggan. Mrs. Duggan is an advocate for all children. She has served as vice chair of this board and done an exemplary job. Dr. Uh, Mrs. Duggan, I was going to call you Dr. Duggan, but that's all right. You're Dr. Duggan, too. Uh, one thing I can always say about Mrs. Duggan, when she receives information that is good for us or good for the children, she never fails to share it with us. She's not a selfish person. She's very giving. And I want to give the other board members a chance to say some things before I make a presentation to Mrs. Uh, Duggan. And you all can just speak at will. Mr. Cameron, then Ms. Phillips. Thank you. When I first started serving on this board four years ago, Nancy Duggan did it at the same time. I knew Nancy for a long time before that, uh, but she has certainly proven to me to be a person who looks out for students and also for the well-being of the schools. Uh, your expertise has been very helpful for me and I hope for other members of the board and through the different meetings we attended and traveling to those meetings and uh, board meetings, I want to say thank you. I really appreciate uh, the guidance that you have given not only to me, but maybe to other members of the board as well. We'll miss you, but we may call you again, too. <laughs> Ms. Phillips? 
Well, it's also been an honor to serve with Mrs. Duggan on the board. Mrs. Duggan has just dedicated her life to education, and there is no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And it's just been a privilege to serve with her. Um, I don't think you can find anyone more knowledgeable. She has served in so many capacities within our state. Yes, she was a classroom teacher, but she doesn't see things solely from the perspective of a classroom teacher. Yes, she's on the board, but she doesn't see things solely from that perspective. She is the unique capability of seeing the whole from many different perspectives, and that's been very, very helpful. I'm very proud and grateful to have been able to initiate um, this letter as a gesture of my personal appreciation, and I think the board's too, um, for her excellence and her dedication. And with your permission, I'd like to go yes. ahead and read it. <clears throat> and it's kind of wordy, but it's well written. <laughs> Dr. Gilbert, oh. no, I didn't write it. I didn't write it. <laughs> so I hope I don't trip up on any of the words. All right. <clears throat> Dear Governor Haslam, Nancy Duggan is a champion for children, and it has been our honor to work beside her on the Murfreesboro City Board of Education. She is an extraordinary leader who understands the importance of Tennessee students being able to compete in a global economy. Nancy believes in academic rigor, relevance, and real-world application of learning. She has been a tireless advocate for educational excellence. Nancy was the first teacher to attain certification from the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards. She has served, first Tennessee teacher, she has served on various state committees including the Board of Regents Teaching Quality Task Force, Advisory Council for Tennessee's Teacher Quality Enhancement, State Board of Education's Parent Involvement and Early Childhood Certification Committees, Tennessee's Reading Accomplishments Committee, and Reading Literacy Advisory Committee, Ad Hoc Committee for the Governor's Reading Initiative, and the Knowledge-Based Implementation Team for the Teaching Quality Initiative, among others. She has presented at state and national levels, is well known as a national board certified teacher consultant, and her expertise is scientifically, scientifically based. Reading research and applications is unquestioned. Recently, Nancy decided to step down from the Murfreesboro City School Board. However, because of her exemplary contributions to education and her value to the state's vision of excellence, we endorse her nomination for membership on committees or commissions whose goal is to improve education in Tennessee. She will be a tremendous asset for building effective schools, effective teachers, and the future. Respectfully, every member of our school board. At this time, I'd like for the board, along with the members of our audience, to please stand as we present Mrs. Duggan with this gift. We cannot repay Mrs. Duggan for what has been a lifetime commitment, but we do have a little token for her. We will yield at this time to Mrs. Duggan if she has anything she'd like to say. I would just like to say thank you uh, to the citizens of Murfreesboro for giving me this opportunity to serve on the board. I think it's a real unique opportunity to serve on a board in a school system where you had the privilege of teaching for 24 years. Um, Murfreesboro City Schools has been such a great part of my life and our family life because both of our children attended Murfreesboro City Schools from pre-K through sixth grade. And I'm so old that I actually attended Critchlow Grammar School, uh, which was a first through eighth grade. So I have a long history with Murfreesboro City Schools. And I'm very thankful for the difference that the school system has made in the lives of countless families, uh, particularly my own family, my children, and I will um, still be very close by and will often have conversations with individuals because even though I won't be on the board, Murfreesboro City Schools will still be a tremendous part of my life. So I want to encourage the board. <clears throat> you have a lot of work ahead of you and I just would encourage you to stay very attuned to what the legislature is doing in the future because they will be doing more and more things that local boards will have to uh, be more involved in than we've had to be in the past. So I wish you the very best and I thank you uh, for allowing me to serve with you. It's been a great joy. Thank you, Ms. Duggan. Thank you. Okay, down to business. Uh, we'll entertain a motion at this time for the approval of the agenda. So move. 
Seconded. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, sign of aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Dr. Gilbert, communications. Yes. Well, first, we would like to congratulate our reelected board members, Butch Campbell and also Nancy Phillip, and would also like to congratulate our newly elected board members, Dr. Andy Brown and Jared Barrett. So, welcome aboard and glad you're back. <laughs> <laughs> Teacher Appreciation Week, May the 7th through 11th, and also National Teacher Day, May 8th. Retiring employees will be honored at a dinner uh, with the school board on Thursday, May 17th at 6 o'clock at the Double Tree. Murph was honored recently with an invitation from the First Lady to participate in the Governor's Egg Roll that was held on April 4th to entertain the children and then was invited to tour the mansion. So congratulations to Murph. And also congratulations to the following teachers who were named as Math Corps Coaches. And this is uh, quite a benefit to us as a system. These ladies will be helping us with implementation of the, the core content standards and particularly in, in math. And so we're very glad that we have two teachers, Karen Cook and Rebecca Few. Karen is with the Discovery School and Rebecca is at John Pittard, but they will be working with all of our teachers in our district. So we're, we're glad to have them and congratulations to them because it was quite a process to be selected. 58 of our students have been selected to participate in the 2012 fourth through sixth grade Duke University Talent Identification Program. A special thanks to the Rutherford County Soil Conservation District for awarding a $500 crop grant to community initiatives. And this will be used to sponsor a community garden. And it's my understanding that, that we already have begun to uh, work on that garden. And this is in partnership with Key Memorial United Methodist Church and will be located on State Street. Thanks to Mid-South Bank for their $250 donation to John Pittard Elementary that was used for supplementary fourth grade social studies materials. And then congratulations to Black Fox Elementary that was named the City School of the Year at the recent Read to Succeed Volunteer Luncheon. Thank you, Dr. Gilbert. We're now ready for consent items. If there's a motion or if there's any that you see on here that you need to discuss further. Hearing none, uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Seconded. There's a motion and a second. All in favor of approval of the consent items say aye. 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 Thank you. Action items, uh, Ms. Baker. Okay, the first um, item that you have is board policy PER. PER 39, um, it is coming to you for first reading. It deals with suspension and dismissal of tenured teachers. The Changes that have been made to this policy are to insert the statutory definitions for the basis uh, for terminating a tenure teacher. The state law sets forth very specific um, reasons that a tenure teacher could be terminated. They include incompetence, inefficiency, neglect of duty, um, also unprofessional conduct or conduct and becoming a member of the teaching um, profession and insubordination. And the statute, the Tennessee statutes also have very specific definitions for each of those categories. So those have been included in the policy. Additionally, the policy has been revised to set forth all of the steps set out in the state statutes relative to going through a termination procedure for a tenured teacher. And I thought this was helpful both for um, employees that would might have to deal with this issue and for the public that um, may be involved in dealing with any discipline or termination of a tenure teacher, such as their attorneys or the teachers themselves. Um, so those are the main changes to this policy. There are a couple of minor um, typographical errors I found in the policy when reviewing it before tonight, and I'll have I'll give those to Miss um, Ridley to correct. They are just some of the statutory references have minor typographical errors in them, and I'll fix those. Are there any question, board members, for Miss Baker on uh, PER thirty nine? Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion for the approval of the first reading. So move. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and second. All in favor, sign of aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Thank you. Okay, the second policy you have before you tonight for first reading is board policy STU 5, assignment 
of students to schools and classes. Um, this policy, the changes you'll see there in bold, one change is the Senate students on zone waivers cannot be sent back to their zone school without approval of the director of schools or the director's designee. That has been added to the policy. And the, sen the last sentence, principals have the authority and responsibility for assigning students to the individual classrooms. That has been added to the policy. Are there any questions for Mrs. Baker? Hearing none, we'll entertain a motion for the first reading. Approval. So moved. Seconded. There, there's a motion and a second. All in favor, sign of aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. <coughs> Board members, the next item that we have is approval of the fiscal year budget, uh, year 13 budget. The school board and the administration met. We had a very positive uh, discussion on our budget for this year. Um, when we met, we wanted to make sure and, in, and make sure that every child would have a chance to be successful. As a result of this study session, the administration has approved the budget that is before you, and each one of us have had a copy of this budget. Under the Tennessee Code annotated, the chair and the director of schools should develop a budget, and it was developed and presented to this board. Therefore, as chair, I would like to move that the board approve the budget as it was presented at our discussions with the addition of a 2.5% across the board raise. That is my motion. Is there a second? And I will open this up for discussion. Second. There's a motion and a second. Questions or discussion? I have a comment. Ms. Duggan. We had some excellent discussions about the budget and very healthy discussions because we know that the future is an unknown and that we must watch our money very carefully. One thing I think would be interesting, I hope, to our public is the fact that the governor recommended a 2.5 pay increase for our teachers. Of course, that would be only on the state portion of the salaries. But what most citizens are unaware of, and I think sometimes even our teachers, is that even though they say a 2.5 and they mandate that, they do not send that amount of money to our districts. There is, and I know that Mr. Anderson probably could give us that very figure. I won't ask you to do that this evening. But um, even for the part that comes from the state, the local district still has to pick up a significant amount of that money to make it a 2.5 across the board. So that's just something I think that all of us need to be aware of, that you know there are lots of good things often that come down from the state, but oftentimes they do not, or most of the time, they do not come fully funded. And that's something as a board we have to keep in mind, but it's also something I think that the citizens need to understand, and for sure we want to make sure that our teachers understand that. Thank you, Ms. Duggan. Is Ms. Smith? I just want to thank Mr. Anderson for it. the budget. This was my first time at the budget, and um, you know it's not every day I spend fifty-three million dollars. But it, <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a very detailed, painfully meticulous budget, and um, we went by practically through every single line. We thought about every staff member professional teacher, uh, custodian, student when we went through the budget. And um, I, I think that our taxpayers can, can appreciate all of the thought that was put behind it. Um, and I think that our, our children and our, our teachers will do well with what we've come, with, uh, come up with. So now this board is, uh, Ms. Phillips, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, ditto to everything everyone else has said. Um, I would also like to, to add that uh, we're not just looking at our current budget, that we, are, we know and already planning for some big ticket items that we know are coming down the pike. For example, the state's going to soon require that all of our children do testing, um, TCAP testing. Is this right, um, Dr. Gilbert, in the year 2014? Um, online. 
And so we're thinking and planning about what equipment needs we will need at that time, uh, what we will need to update, and we know that's going to be a large expenditure. Also, with the building of a new school and with our increased population, we know that school buses, which are about $100,000 a pop are going to be needed and that's very expensive and so we're already planning for that and um, I want to also congratulate and thank Mr. Anderson and Ms. Bell, Ms. Galena Bell and, and all of the staff, everybody that, that participated with input um, because this, you know, it's arduous, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and painstaking. I think that was a good word for it and we appreciate everyone's efforts on it. But we did do a great deal of discussion and um, and. Uh, review of the budget. Any other board members have any comments or questions? Hearing none, and Ms. Duggan says this will be your last time to hear it read out as a voice vote. Ms. Ridley, would you please call the roll? Pleasure. <laughs> Mr. Campbell? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Duggan? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Wade? Yes. Not Thank sure. you. <laughs> Reports and information, Dr. Gilbert. Okay. I'm going to turn this part over to Mr. Anderson. Thank you, Dr. Gilbert. The first report I have is the monthly revenue expenditure report. We are at the 75% benchmark for the year. Uh, we are actually, our net income is a little better than last year at this time. We were 3056000 this year. We're 3263000 So we were glad to see overall we are back to where we should be. On the sales tax collections on the revenues, we're up $142,000 over last year at this time. And on property tax, we're up 597000 over last year at this time. So there's a very good very, very good news for the health of the economy in, in Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. So we're real glad to see the revenue picture taking shape. On the expenditure side, uh, our expenditures are in line for where we should be at 73.1% of the year. So we feel pretty good about where our budget is at this time as far as uh, where we're headed for the rest of the year. So that's the information. If there are any questions, we'll be glad to answer those. Okay. The next report is your uh, membership and attendance report. Uh, we are 204 students over last year at this time. As, as I mentioned last month, our numbers do tend to go down for a period and then start to head back up. We went back into the upward swing a little bit. And we're 140 over what we had budgeted. So our growth is really, really strong this year. Our K through 3 PTR is at 18.81. Our four through six is at 20.66. And I think for the first time ever, our attendance information for current month, previous month, and previous year is exactly the same at 96%. That's the first time I can remember all those numbers working out exactly the same. So but that was an interesting little play on numbers. Uh, so our, we have 167 special ed uh, students. That's only one increase over uh, last month at this time. So we, we, look, uh, we feel good about where we are in enrollment as well. So the uh, district seems to be in good shape financially and student-wise. And Mr. Anderson, before before you leave your section, I want to thank you and, and also thank Ms. Bell, but also thank the entire staff for their work on the budget. I'd like to also thank the principals. They came in and talked with us individually, and the department heads came in and talked with us individually. So it's been quite a process. So I'd like to thank all those folks who were involved with the budget, and also like to thank the board because you all went through a couple of really rigorous days together, much less all your study that you had to do previously. I thank you for the questions that you had and really appreciate your work on that. And then finally, I would like to add, I uh, sincerely appreciate the board's commitment to children and, and sincerely appreciate Dr. Andrews and Ms. Duggan's work the last few years. Other business board, is there any other business that you'd like to bring so we can bring it up at the next meeting? I'm surprised it's sitting on the agenda, but I want to wish all the third through sixth graders uh, well on the TCAP. Uh, it's not, um, as, as we were talking earlier, it is not just the kids that are involved in this. You've got the parents taking in snacks, parents are in school tutoring, and it's a really big part of our community right now. So if you see a child that's in third through sixth grade, actually 
third through twelfth grade, I guess. <laughs> Please wish them well on the TCAP. Tell them it's just a good way to show off. Exactly. Good job. Mr. Campbell. I've got two things I want to mention. Uh, going along with <clears throat> what Carter was saying about testing, I'm supervising some student teachers and visiting the secondary school honors class the other day, and um, they went through their practice test. So I'm going to encourage parents that have students above the sixth grade from where we go to all the way up through those seniors in high school to make sure that they get the rest and all the things that they need because with the answers in front of them the other day, I, I couldn't answer them, but that's, you know, <laughs> that's the difference between my time in school and their time. Uh, today I also took a few minutes and went by after last month's board meeting and had such a wonderful <clears throat> documentary almost on the the mobile health bus and the work that Dr. Gilbert had done with it to get it started. And I went by and visited those folks today with uh, Jenny, Kathy, Jenny, and Brent. And I believe those were the four in the bus at Bradley. And if, if you have not ever visited there, it is uh, something to go see. It is certainly a avenue that we now have for our students that they can be provided with some health care that they need. And it is a it's certainly a, to use the old term, a shot in the arm for our system, I think, for our students to be able to participate in such a thing. And I will thank Dr. Gilbert publicly for the work she did several years ago on getting that piece of equipment involved in our students. Thank you. Ms. Duggan. I know earlier that Dr. Gilbert did mention the core coaches, but I'd like to say a word about that um, on behalf of Karen Cook and Rebecca Few. Not only will they be working with teachers within Murfreesboro City, they will have also been charged with doing training this summer, and they will be working with teachers from across the state. Um, the process was extremely rigorous. Uh, so for, for Murfreesboro City to have two teachers that were chosen, I think we actually had three, but one of them decided to retire. Uh, so I was just very proud uh, to see those teachers at the training this weekend, and the training was superb. And they will help us as we transition to the Common Core Standards, which will take place in 2014-15. So parents, uh, be tuned in to what's happening because the rigors are about to go up up even more, and they should, rightly so. And our children are perfectly capable capable of meeting those rigors, but it's going to take everyone working together and being very supportive and very positive. So once again, I just want to congratulate Karen Cook and Rebecca Few. Thank you, Ms. Duggan. As a reminder, next Saturday is our board retreat, and I'm thinking that we did get some information. Ms. Trey gave us some information. Please read it prior to the meeting, if there's no other business other than saying goodbye to two of our friends, Dr. Andrews and Mrs. Duggan. It's not really a goodbye, it's I know you'll drop by and see us later. <laughs> but thank you for your service. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? There's a motion and a second. We are adjourned.